first try in eight months ago. I looked at every Premier League club and predicted one summer transfer who would fail. And um, it's fair to say, okay, people looked at my prediction skill in the past and instantly made the assumption that I still have the intelligence of dog food. Congratulations to everyone on this list that will make the team of the year. Congratulations to all these players having the best season of their careers. Congratulations to Jesse Lingard for winning the Ballon d'Or. Lingardinho will win PFA Player of the Year now, thanks. Ha 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 ha! Lingardinho will never flop, he is legend. He is a legend? <sighs> Nobody had any faith in me. Well now, this is the end of April. And let's just see how well I actually did then. Or if, if I really do have shampoo for brains. I want to win this one, okay? So badly. I want this to be my redemption arc. So come on, please. As long as I get more right than I've got wrong, then... I'll be a happy man. Right, let's go. Arsenal, Fabio Vieira, yes. I mean, there'll be a few games where he's caught in possession. He'll get muzzled off the ball by someone like Idrissa Gay and a fat gooner screaming that he's just another Danny Tobias. Some Mediterranean footballer with the muscles of a blueberry pie. I think it'll be a season of adjustment. Eventually, he will come good, but yeah, by late November, you'll just have Arsenal fans moaning. Okay, I'm gonna say this. I got this one right. I know, Fabio Vieira is the most popular flop on the list. Arsenal fans will defend him to the hilt. I know right now, I'll have some angry gooners looking at their phone and wondering why on earth they clicked on a video to see some Irish gargoyle waffling on when he's clearly got the brains of burnt pizza. But, but, come on! You paid more for Vieira than you did Martin Odegaard when you dragged him out of FC Porto. He is the 10th most expensive player in the history of your club. And, um... He's only started three games in the league and mostly just gets five to ten minute cameos off the bench. I'm sorry, but for 35 million pounds, he hasn't really done anything yet except register two assists against Oxford and score against Bodo Glimpt. So you know what? I know Vieira has looked okay when he's played, but honestly, if you told an Arsenal fan last summer that these would be his stats, they wouldn't have taken it. So I'm taking this one as a win. I got this one right. Yes! I'm Weather Lads. If you're enjoying this video, hit that subscribe button. It would mean the absolute world to me. I want us to top of Rory Jennings. That is our mission on this channel. Let's try and beat him to 300,000 subscribers. So go on, hit that red button if you're new. Absolute legends. Ask the Villa, Philip Coutinho, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna call it. Philippe Coutinho is gonna be a 17 million pound flop. Coutinho is Hamas Rodriguez part two. I'll oh, just watch. His attitude is going to be all wrong. Yeah. I said that Coutinho would be like Hamas Rodriguez at Everton. And lads, Oh, it's going that way. Last season, when Coutinho was only on loan and spanked in a goal at the Eddie Hat on the final day of the season, Villa fans probably thought, Oh, next season we're going to see the real Coutinho. He's going to be world class again. Yeah, he's been about as world class as a paralyzed swat. I'm sorry, but this is so embarrassing. Let's not forget, this is still the third most expensive footballer of all time. It was only five years ago when Barcelona paid 120 million pounds. And yet now... He's got one goal in 20 league games. He's only completed the full 90 minutes once. Away at Leeds in October. Other than that, he's had horrible fitness. To the point where I wouldn't be surprised if, yeah, he spends every night devouring ice cream and cake. Honestly, he's got the fitness of Joey Tribbiani. Emery was actually sniffing around a deal for Coutinho when he was Arsenal boss. But now that he's able to see Phil up close, oh, it's probably a bit like looking at Kevin James in the bath. Bournemouth, Marcus de Verdier, no. My poor old Marcus de Verdier. A 23 year old midfielder who's just left Middlesbrough for Bournemouth in a 10 million pound deal. And I just know, I, I just know what average he's going to be. Honestly, he's about as thrilling as wet cardboard. Ozzy, he's gonna have a sloppy first touch, show the goal threat of a marmalade sandwich. Ozzy, he won't score a single goal all season. And mostly, he's gonna be a disaster flop. Yeah, the first one that I've got wrong. And boy, did I get this one wrong. Although, for the first two months of the season, I looked right. Because this is a 24 year old winger, and you guys United reject. So, yeah, move from Middlesbrough for 10 million quid. And guess what? Zero goals and zero assists in his first 13 Premier League games. And if he'd just frozen time just a week before Halloween, and I would have looked like some brainy nerd who does algebra in his sleep. Because I was right! But no, he then exploded. Four assists and two goals in just three games. Then a further winning goal against Wolves. Then he smacks in a wonder strike against Fulham. All season long, the Verdiers look quick, dangerous, and pretty deadly on that Bournemouth wing. He can play either flank. Yes, he's had his injuries, but honestly. When he's played, he's looked every inch a 10 million pound footballer. Actually, he looks like he's worth double that. So yeah, um, first one I've got wrong. 2-1. Brentford, Ben, me, no. To me, he's gonna struggle with fitness and form, suffer a crisis in confidence, and utterly melt like an ice cream in the microwave. Ozzy, he's about to get relegated again. Ah, oh, next summer's gonna be miserable for him. Lunacy! Absolute lunacy! I said Ben, me, you, you Brentford disaster. Back-to-back -back relegations, I said. Yeah, 
the minute he scored on his home debut in a 4 0 win over Man United, that's what I knew. Oh, maybe. Maybe my cheesecake brain is wrong. Lads, me is playing practically every single minute for Brentford at centre back. They've only lost seven times when he's been on the pitch. Lads, me actually went on a personal 14 game on beaten run and he chipped in with more goals against Wolves and Southampton. I thought without his comfort blanket of Sean Dyche, he'd be like a recently divorced old man who suddenly has to download Tinder on his phone. But no, me isn't traumatised. He's not lost. He's been an incredible freebie signing. So right now, I'm level. It's 2-2. Two, two. Oh, I'm nervous now. Brighton, Julio and Cizo, no. Pretty simple this. Brighton have paid £10 million for a Paraguayan wonder kid Julio and Cizo, who was born in 2004. I mean, he won't score a single goal all season. Next. Well, I can't call Julio and Cizo a flop now after he just stuck one into the top corner of Chelsea's net from 30 yards out, giving Brighton their first ever win at Stamford Bridge. Listen to me, fair. This teenage Paraguayan baller was barely heard from when Graham Potter had the Brighton job. I mean, he missed the first month of the season due to a facial injury. I mean, what did he do? Accidentally stabbed himself in the cheek with a blood toothbrush? And Cizo hasn't played much, no. But I mean, in the last month alone, he scored against Bournemouth and Chelsea. He's having an impact, so no. I guess I got this one wrong. And I'm now 3-2 down. Chelsea, Carlo, Chukamoemika, no. Chukamoemika will not start a Premier League match this season. He'll be given a total of, what, 24 minutes on the pitch. He'll spend his 19th birthday locked in the Stamford Bridge attic before in January getting loaded out the Vitesse on him. Honestly, awful transfer, Carney. Honestly, you might as well start learning Dutch now. 24 minutes on the pitch. Instead, um, he's played 224 minutes in the Premier League this season. Listen, I don't want to sit here and talk of Carney Chukamoemika as if he's been a spectacular Chelsea wonder kid. He hasn't. And he has barely played. I mean, Christ, well, Thomas Tuchel didn't even want to stick him on the bench. He probably looked at CC and thought of him the same way you'd think about that bowl of expired yogurt rotting in the back of your fridge. But to be fair, he's actually started two Premier League games this season, weirdly, as a left wing back. I mean, he's had 10 minute cameos in the center of midfield. Although, to be fair, he has sort of disappeared now. Listen, Chukum Wemaka hasn't played much. But I mean, he's played more than I thought. So another one I got wrong. And now I'm losing 4 2. Crystal Palace, Sam Johnstone, yes. Sam Johnstone thinks that he's going to walk into Sutter's Park to automatically command the Crystal Palace number one shirt, right? Sorry, Sam, I don't think you're gonna play a single Premier League minute. Lads, I was close. I was so very close. Everyone thought that Sam Johnstone would be Crystal Palace number one. I know you did. But as well, this fellow, Wild West Brom, was being linked to Manchester United. He was playing for England. And yeah, it still took Johnstone 30 game weeks to make his Palace debut. I mean, he has played the last two games under Roy Hodgson. Wins over Southampton and Leeds. I can only assume he, he got in Hodgson's good books early doors by, I don't know, cutting up his food in the canteen or offering to wipe his bum at the corner of his shirt. I was close. He nearly went the entire season without playing a game, but still. Having to wait until April to finally play. I was right. 4-3. I'm back in the race. Everton, Ruben Vinagre, yes. We've seen this type of random transfer fail time and time again at Goodison Park. Ozzy, he's not dislodging Vitaly Bukalenko from the team. Everton fans will quickly be so underwhelmed by Vinagre that Ozzy feel like doing a frustrated wee in their seats. Ozzy, this loan deal is not going to be made permanent next summer. I can promise you that. This is going to be so forgettable. Yes! 4-4! Four, four. I was right. Of course I was right. Ruben Vinagre. I don't think there's been a more forgettable person in Everton's entire history. Even his own mum probably forgets where in the world he works. Because, right, he played 20 minutes in the opening day of the season against Chelsea, then played four minutes against Brentford, and since August, not a single peep. This man has played 24 minutes of football all season long. He's absolutely rotten, like a sticky Toblerone on that bench, 19 times this season, and 10 times he hasn't even made the match they squad. I mean, Sean Dice has probably already forgotten who he is. This guy is just gonna be a pub quiz question in three years' time. No Nobody will ever remember that the former Wolves left back ever signed for Everton. Fulham Andres Pereira, no. I think he'll be a lightweight paper bag in the Fulham shirt. He might spank one in from 25 yards to win the goal of the month in September, but other than that, nah. <sighs> wrong, completely wrong. Andres Pereira, a former Manchester United outcast. I thought he would be what Jesse Lingard has been. A highly rated ex Old Trafford Chris Packett who can't get into the starting 11 of a newly promoted side. And now, um, he shipped him with four goals. Six assists has looked like an absolute live wire creative spark in Marco Silva's midfield. I said he would flop. He really has not. So yeah, I'm losing 5-4 against myself. Great. Leeds, Luis Sinistera, yes. Trust me, this Colombian forward is going to be one of the flops of the season. Sinistera is going to be an injury riddled mess. And even when he is fit, he'll just look out of his depth and barely even sneeze in the direction of a goal. 
Sorry, Leeds. Yes, yes, get in. Five, five. I said that Lewis Sinistero would be an injury riddle Leeds mess. And yes, he has. He's missed huge chunks of the season due to the fact that he's got a body made of cheese. There's only here another 23 goals in the Eredivisie last season. Leeds paid fine or 20 million for this guy. And um, he scored three goals all season, zero assists. Was also stupidly sent off against Aston Villa in September, picking up a second yellow card for blocking the ball when Douglas Louise tried to take a quick free kick. I mean, that is the height of idiocy. He's only started in one Leeds win all season. I don't want to hear any excuses. The guy is a flop. Leicester, nobody. Uh, okay, Leicester haven't actually signed anyone yet, so, um. Next? This one's just null and void. Next, Liverpool, Calvin Ramsey, yes. Wait, do you really think he's gonna play? I mean, he might make one Premier League start. Probably around Christmas time after the World Cup to give Trent's legs a rest. He'll play a few games in both domestic cups. I mean, he'll do something stupid like get nutmeg by Dan James and then just get laughed at on TikTok for that. And yeah, he won't really look like anything special. I'm winning. I'm actually winning 6-5. Calvin Ramsey, the teenage right back bought from Aberdeen, has played even less than I thought. He was given 90 minutes in the League Cup against Derby County, where Liverpool embarrassingly squeezed through in penalties. He was given three minutes against Napoli in the Champions League, and that's it. Absolutely zero minutes in the Premier League, but uh, I mean, it gets worse. He was only allowed to sit on the bench once against Tottenham in November. I know he underwent knee surgery in February, but still, he was fit for two thirds of the campaign. And considering Trent Alexander Arnold was repeatedly forgetting how to defend, then if I was Ramsey, a 19 year old Scottish international, not some grubby 15 year old who's still at school, he is an adult grown man. I would be pretty furious to so be left out of nearly every match they squat. Man City, Calvin Phillips, yes. To me, Phillips is just Rodri's second in command. He's mostly going to be lodged on Man City's bench. He loses England place for the World Cup. And by next summer, people will look back and forget he was even at the Eddie Had. Andy, his impact is going to be minimal. 2022's answer to Jack Rodwell. 7-5! I'm winning 7-5! I don't know what to do. My predictions are usually wet monkey sick. But now, I've got seven right. Everything I said about Calvin Phillips has come true. He's barely played. Talks to be in a bench warming garden. No. Joe's over 100 minutes of Premier League football under his belt by mid-April. That is absolute garbage. I knew he flopped. Why did he move to the Eddie hat? Did he really think he's going to be able to dislodge Rodri from the team? What, this little average muffin from Leeds? Man United, Alessandro Martinez, no. Oh dear. Eric Denag is playing two centre halves, not three. And he's let Harry Maguire keep the captaincy. And he's not exactly going to drop a world champion with four Champions Leagues. So Martinez, I see him being stuffed to the bench. Listen, I know he's a good player, but I just don't see Ten Hag showing the bottle to stuff an £85 million club captain to the bench. Yeah. I thought Eric Den Hag wouldn't have the bottle to drop Harry Maguire. He literally got rid of Cristiano Ronaldo, a man with five Ballon d'Ors. And here was me thinking he'd be too scared to upset the feelings of a former Hull centre half. This was hideous. Although, he did lose his first two league games. He looked like a terrified hobbit who got bounced about in that 4-0 defeat at Brentford. But he was dragged off at half time. That was the pivotal moment. If he'd have been dropped then and there, he might have gone down as one of the worst Premier League experiments of all time. Talking on a Manchester United centre-back who's probably too terrified to advertise his height on Tinder. Just the Argentinian Tyrion Lannister. But no, he started the every game and looked like a rock-solid centre-half. Mostly. I mean, he hasn't been perfect. At all. Okay, I don't have complete Nutella for brains because this is still the same centre back who was on the pitch when Brentford scored four, Man City scored six, Aston Villa and Arsenal both scored three, Liverpool scored seven. Newcastle could have scored five. He has not been the signing of the season or the best defender in the league. I wouldn't have him anywhere near the PFA team of the year. Absolutely not. He lost the match with seven goals to nil. Sorry, what? But he hasn't been a flop. Nowhere close. He's been good. He's been very good most of his games. But um yeah, 7-6, Newcastle nobody. Newcastle have made three signings. Matt Target, Nick Pope and Sven Botman. And I'm sorry, but none of them will be flops. These boys are far too sensible for them to fail. Okay, I said no Newcastle player would flop. That's not true. I was wrong. Matt Target was a 15 million pound left back boy from Aston Villa. I mean, 15 million pounds is nothing to be sniffed at. For 15 million pounds, he has to start. Yeah, he started four from the games all season long. I mean, he did have a heel bone injury which robbed him of a chunk of the season, but he still can't get his place back off Dan Burke. So if we're being harsh, I have to call him a flop. And so I was wrong. 7-7. Seven, seven. Nothing a far Jesse Lingard, yes! I think his own grand ambition for the sport are circling the drain. This guy who just wants a payday. And why else would you only sign a one-year contract at Forest? I think Lingard will be a Nottingham Forest mess. No goals, maybe three assists. And honestly, Steve Cooper will have a bench by Christmas. Sorry guys, but this is just another Delhi Ali. This is the most perfect prediction in the list. No goals, three assists, and bench by Christmas, right? Nah, it's even worse than that. No goals, no assists, but 
yeah, bench by Christmas. Lingard is on £200,000 a week. I'm gonna say this. If you look solely at the wages paid, he is the worst Premier League signing of the entire season. And the worst signing a newly promoted club has ever made. And lads, QPR some expensive stinkers. But seriously, everything I predicted about Lingard has been bang on the money. I mean, he's a free agent next month. And I honestly think he's gonna have two options. Turkey or the MLS? He is Deli Ali Part 2. Southampton, Arma Belakotchup, no. Some players you can just smell the stink of transfer flop. In the same way I was never convinced by Yannick Vestergaard, ever. Sorry, Belakotchup. He's gonna be the modern day John Alon Boomstop. And you remember him? This is weird. Southampton are bottom of the league. If there's any club where I should have been right about predicted flops, it's this one, right? But no, I actually got this one wrong. Sure, it hasn't been a great debut season for Armel Belakotchup. I mean, there's been loads of defeats, but the centre back has personally played pretty well. He's only 21, actually forced his way into Germany's World Cup squad. I don't want to call him a roaring success, because look at where they are in the league, but I think it would be harsh to call him a flop. So, 8-8. Eight, eight. Lads, ah, it's getting close. Tottenham, come on, Langley, yes. This man is going to be a Tottenham defensive meatball. He'll only be allowed to start about 10 Premier League matches. By January, Antonio Conte is going to be begging Barca to cancel his loan. Honestly, he's going to be the modern day Vlad Kirikis. Just pretty hope. Or Bunjani Kumalo. Or even Sebastian Bassong. Just pretty hopeless. Yes. Yes! Clement Langley has actually played a lot of games this season. Way more than I thought. 30 in all competitions for Tottenham. As a lone signing for Barcelona. Has he really been a flop? I mean, he's been average, not dreadful, not great, just utterly bang average. And I'm pretty sure I taught him don't sign players to be average. So you know what? I'll give myself another pat on the back because, lads, I've just made it 9-8 to me. Get in! Oh, no, I just need one more. One more just to clinch it and seal the win. Come on, West Ham, what did I say? West Ham, John Lucas Camacho, yes. Yes! 10-8, 10-8. 10-8! Gianluca Scamaccia is the latest big money Italian flop. This 23 year old Syria goal machine is gonna be so out of his depth. I mean, it'll be untrue. Ozzy, it'll just be a frustrating West Ham center forward. The modern day Mido. Someone will probably be talking into pizza and chicken nuggets on a nightly basis by February. He'll score about three goals all season. Three goals all season? You cannot make this up. We are in mid-April, and this 30 million pound striker is literally stuck on three Premier League goals. But you know what? It did look like I was going to be wrong. Because by early October, the guy had actually netted six goals in all competitions. And I was rapidly eating my words. But then the goals dried up. He got a knee injury. David Moyes lost faith in him. And signed Danny Ings instead. I mean, he hasn't actually played since mid-January. And now all the tabloids are calling him a flop. So yeah, another one I've got right. Now let's just see if I can end on a winning note. Wolves, he Chang Wang, no. Well, I'm not going to break that Nathan Collins is going to flop now, am I? Nah. He Chan Huang, the 27 year old South Korean winger, made his loan move from RB Leipzig permanent, and he's been fine, I guess, although nothing special. But he's not been a flop, so I guess that's 10 9. But look at that. I've won. The guy with the prediction skill of a melted egg sandwich. I've actually predicted more flops than I've not. I've got, I've got 10 right. I mean, doesn't mean the world is going to end? What's actually going on? I'm almost scared now. I've won this video. I thought looking back at this, especially when I saw Lissandro Martinez in the thumbnail, I thought that I would once again be exposed for being about as clever as a brain dead mouse. But no, instead, read it and weep everyone. 10-9 win. Get in there. Anyway, that's it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below. What did you think? What ones did you get wrong? Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'll talk to you in a while.